The Vivor Murphy bed hinges are terrific. They're sleek, the springs are strong, and they're a great value. I just used these hinges to build a Murphy bed and put together a list of six things the instructions don't tell you. You can check out a video I put together on the complete project, but here's the, uh, here's the list that I hope you find helpful. Number one, remove the springs from the hinge casing. There's a pin that allows you to separate the hinge into two sections, one that goes on the bed frame, the other that goes into the cabinet or into the subframe. And once you have opened up the case, you'll see the five springs. It's very easy to back out the tensioning uh, screw. And once that's removed, you can then unhook all the springs, set them aside. And once that uh, uh, is done and the hinge case is empty, it's very easy to move the hinge extension, see how everything is going to uh, operate get comfortable with using the hinges in your project. Number two, use the hinge case and the hinge extension as a template to mark all of the holes and the hinge location uh, on the frame and the cabinet. So again, once the hinges uh, are free of the springs, it's easy to move them around uh, and then to uh, use those as the the template and get your uh, project laid out. Number three, mortise the hinge extension into the bed frame. This makes for a much stronger connection between the hinge and the bed frame. You're not relying on the bolts alone uh, to, uh, to hold the frame. The plate uh, of the hinge extension is doing uh, some of the work and carrying the load. And do the same, mortise the plate that holds the legs into the uh, bed frame as well. It just makes for a strong, clean project. Number four, make a bed frame that can hold the mattress when it's folded upright, as well as holding it uh, when it's unfolded in the sleeping position. So what I mean by that is that the uh, part of the bed frame that runs between the two hinges should be a little bit taller and that's going to allow you to catch uh, the bottom of the mattress when it's folded into the upright position and you won't need to rely on having a strap to hold the mattress onto the frame when you're closing it. Number five, make a partial frame to attach the hinges and align them in the cabinet or the subframe. The beauty of doing this is that you're not working with something very large when you're trying to do all of the uh, fitting and marking and leveling and aligning. So many of the projects I looked at online uh, ended up requiring a helper through many phases of the project because they built a bed frame that was very large and hard to work with instead of having just a sliver of the frame that could uh, attach the hinges, uh, fit into the cabinet, and walk you through all of the phases of assembly. If you do it this way, you'll then have a frame extension that attaches to that initial piece. Uh, again, once everything is fitted into the cabinet. Once I walked through the process of laying out the uh, frame and that partial frame component, I used carriage bolts to attach a full frame extension. That gave me plenty of leverage to be able to pull the frame down into position, mark the position of the legs, and get those attached. Six, use a pair of clamps when reinstalling the springs into the hinge case. So it's easy to hook the springs up and move them into position. But once they uh, are there and lined up, the clamps will let you bring the fitting close enough to reinstall the tensioning uh, screw and get the springs now ready for installation.
So those are the six things I wish I knew before diving in to the project. Hopefully those six items will be helpful to you if you decide to use these Vivor hinges on your own Murphy bed project.